Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Thank you all for your prayers and your well wishes. <sighs> well, I'm struggling through each day to get stuff done to do these videos. But we're going to keep persevering and moving forward. If anyone hadn't already seen it, um, Brother Jesse, Diamond Justification, has done a video. Um, so he's he's doing okay, even though he's still got some issues he's dealing with. I just saw his video this morning. I think it uploaded yesterday, though. So he's doing good. He's, he's still pushing forward. He's still going through. He's still preaching the word. Um... The, uh, the, the guy that I talked about in the video yesterday, I realized where I saw him from. Because I had seen him before. I'd seen him in 2019. And I believe again in 2020. Um, and the reason why they were treating him the way they were. He's a, like a, what, what we refer to as an idiot savant as far as it comes to, concerns the Torah. This guy is a Torah legend. He's just, he's got it down. And the old rabbis treat him the way they do because he's so good with it. Um, not the Antichrist. Not even close. That's why they treat him the way they do. It's because he's just, he's like prophet level status. I think he's already been declared rabbi um, because he's so good with the Torah. So, and there's more to that story, but I don't want to get into that here. But it's it's worth looking into. But it's important, that's why I'm, I appreciate the person that shared that with me. It's important that we know about those things so if there are some issues going on there, we can deal with them and we can help people make sure they don't get deceived because there was, after the video, I did a search on YouTube for that particular person and the slew of videos that were there were about him and every one of them was about him being the Antichrist and it, they were all in Spanish. So... This is why I said what I said yesterday a couple of times in two different videos. You have to be careful. Please be careful what information you believe. It is so important that we make sure we prove everything. I did that yesterday and showed quite clearly that this isn't the case. So test, test, test. Don't, don't rely on other people to give you the truth. You go find it. This is much better. If I... If I tell somebody, would you go buy a car for me? They're going to guarantee you they're going to bring back what I can't use. Something that won't work for me. Why would I do that? Why would I leave my automobile choices in somebody else's hands that doesn't know me or know what I'm looking for? I need to go do that. So if I'm looking for truth, while it's good to ask questions, it's much more important that we do our own searching. I love to answer questions. I love to help people and lead them in, in, into scriptures. But I want people to do their own work too. I want people to take the time to dig into the word because you may discover things about other stuff you didn't know were there. But you never know it if you don't dig into the word. That's why it's so important we do our own research and do our own studying. And then if we get stumped, then go and ask questions. But just know I'm happy to answer questions. <coughs> And as a few people have found out, they've gotten some very, very, very amazing answers to their questions. Not because of me, because of the Bible. <clears throat> so this morning, I want to pray Psalm 135. Praise to God in creation and redemption. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> this isn't one that we do often, but we've done it a few times. But it's very, very good. Because it talks about the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. In these times with the way things are going on now, and the reason this is a good example of why I started with the subject I did, is those of us that are in him, those of us that are his, and that are under his protection, he will defend. We know we can rely on our God. So if something happens and we stumble, he's there. If we make a mistake, he's there. People were going on. I had people message me because I'd done that video of lifting up some people in prayer that had that had to get the COVID vaccine and explaining, you know, God God's knows what's going on here. He knows what, sometimes we have to make decisions we don't want to make. And I had people sending me messages and telling me that I was wrong 
and that they were condemned. No, they're not. Where would you get that from? You know how many people were in situations where they had to do things they didn't want to do? But God did not hold that against them. He didn't even, didn't even mention it. Because he knows. He knows our frailty. He knows that we stumble. He knows that we're weak. He knows that sometimes because we're living here, we have to make decisions we might, might not necessarily like making. And he has mercy and forgiveness in those things. The, there are situations where this is where mercy comes in, God's mercy. And it's for those types of situations. So that's why we can't condemn anybody. Now, if somebody's being heretical and they're going against the word of God and they're preaching such, like we have a bunch of pastors doing right now, oof, these guys, how can somebody get into the pastoral ship? and preach against the very gospel that put them in there. That's amazing. How is that possible? But that's what's happening. So with the days the way they are, with what's going on now, we need encouragement. We need to understand and speak more on, about, on God's love and his mercy for each and every one of us. And that when we have to make a, a decision that we, we look inward and we think, oh, I really didn't want to have to do this, but... I don't see any other choice. I have to do this because of time constraints or whatever is going on. And because of family, he knows, he understands. And he's going to make that work out to your, be your benefit. People that have taken the vaccine that, that are his, he, he'll make sure they don't get sick. He's going to watch over them. It's not the mark of the beast. Like a lot of people suddenly decided it is. It's not. It can't be. Mark of the Beast doesn't come out until we're gone. We have to study. We have to read. We have to read in context. All of those things that people are talking about happen after the church leaves. After the church is removed. The scriptures clearly prove this. I showed it yesterday. Everything in context. Everything in context. So when it comes down to it, when you're in a place like David in the lion's den, or no, Daniel in the lion's den, when you're in a place where there's no more hope left, well, what am I going to do now? So you know what Daniel did? Walked over and sat down with the lions. Lions could care less. Daniel had no choice, had to make a decision, made that decision. God protected him. Now, on Daniel's part, it was a good decision because he standing up for God, but Daniel wasn't perfect, but God protected him. God watched over him. And Daniel had a nice warm night sleeping next to warm lions. So he, everything was fine. We have to, this is where we put our trust in God. When we're in a situation where we have to make a, a decision, we have to put our trust in God. So, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I put my spirit in your hands. Please watch over me and protect me because I don't know where this is going to lead. And then we go forward. His mercy endures forever. In fact, right here, Psalm 136, that's all it talks about. For his mercy endures forever. In fact, that'll be our psalm for tomorrow. God's mercy endures forever. Put your trust in God today. And praise him and thank him for, that, for doing that for you. Because if you can't come to a place where you fully trust him, what kind of faith do you have? We can, we can say we believe all day long, but if we're not coming to a place where we can actually put our trust in him, what, what kind of faith do we have? Because that's what he wants us to do. Trust me, I got this. Trust me, I'm watching over you. Trust me, you are in the palm of my hand and no one can remove you. So what do we do? We trust him. Through trials and tribulations, through troubles, through sickness, we trust him. Through prophecy, through, through destructions, through wars. Look, look at the world. Just, just sit down for an hour. Go through newspaper sites. <laughs> look at all the stuff that's going on. 
God says, trust me, I've got this covered. This is going exactly the way I will it to. So let's put our trust in God today. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up as our God, the one true God, as our Holy Father in heaven, to sing praises unto your holy name, your magnificent name, and to proclaim your magnificent works because you are magnificent and we can trust you. We can put our trust in you no matter what happens here, no matter what happens in our lives, no matter what we have to do to survive. You are watching over us. You are protecting us and you will lead us into truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us that, that ability to be able to trust to rely on you. We thank you for your mercy and grace and your amazing love and this, this salvation that you've given us that once we're saved, once we're sealed, we are sealed forever. We are in the palm of your hand. There is nothing that can remove us from you. Nothing the world can do, nothing we can do and you will not cast us away. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that love and mercy that you show us. This morning, we'd like to praise you for that by reading Psalms 135. Praise to God in creation and redemption. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does, in heaven and in earth, in the seas, and in all deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the earth, the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. He destroyed the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders into the midst of you, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. He defeated many nations and slew mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your fame, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Nor is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord out of Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Put your trust in God today. Father, allow us to put our full trust in you today for everything, for all of our provisions, for all of our protections, for all of our armor and our hedging, for all of our guidance and all of our truth, and for all of our I had a word I was going to use and I can't remember it now. Salvation. For all of our salvation. Redemption. Help us to trust in you for those things. We can't control those things. We can't make those things happen. But you do make those things happen. Thank you, Father. For all those things, we give thanks. For all those things, we lay ourselves down our pride, our arrogance, our self-will, we lay it down and stand before you, plain, putting our trust in you for all these things. Because by our power comes nothing, but by your power comes everything. Thank you, Father, for this understanding. Thank you for this truth. Thank you for giving us a mind to know the truth, a heart to understand the truth, eyes to see the truth, ears to hear the truth, and a mouth to speak the truth. May we all speak the truth. In you, in your word, 
in our Lord Jesus Christ and in trust. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. In Jesus' name, we praise you and bless you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I had to do that one a little quick because I'm already starting to lose my voice. I don't know what it is if I'm dehydrated. I mean, I shouldn't be. I drink enough. If I'm dehydrated or what it is. But I'm going to go get something to drink and see if I can't get my voice back. No matter what you see happen, no matter what you hear, no matter what is going on, what attacks there are, no matter what, how good things are, how peaceful, how quiet things are, trust in God. In all things, in all seasons, and in all ways, trust God. Because in Him is redemption, salvation. In Him is deliverance. Nowhere else. So if we put our trust in Him, put our trust in His Word, in our Lord Jesus, we cannot fail. And nothing can come against us. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you guys in the next video.